Hey guys, it's Mike, and in this video, we're going to be doing something quite a bit different than what I usually do. So in front of me here is actually a system I've had for a little over three to four years now. It was purchased by someone in Canada that I had talked to through the Reddit Apple Discord server. While I don't remember the exact conversation, one thing led to another. He had this machine, he offered it to me, I didn't have anything like it, and the price was right. So I bought it. It came as you see it here with uh, an Apple keyboard and Apple mouse from the era. Unfortunately, not the mechanical one, but what are you going to do? So the system in front of me is a Radius 81 slash 110 Macintosh clone system. I don't know a whole lot about it, but I do know that this specific clone machine is not one that is often talked about. From information I can find on the internet, this machine was introduced in July of 1995 and discontinued in January of 1996 when Steve Jobs returned to Apple and killed the clone program. Its closest genuine Macintosh sibling, as far as I know, is the Power Macintosh 8100-110, not the AV variant that doesn't exist. So this 81-110, you can see the similarity, uh, kind of pretty much comes with the same specs. It's got eight megabytes of RAM soldered to the board. It's got the PowerPC 601 at 100 megahertz, actually 110 megahertz. But yeah, I don't know a whole lot about this machine or classic Mac OS in general. I've had more exposure to older versions of Mac OS 10 than I have to classic Mac OS. And the oldest two Macs I have here right now are a, a 1 gigahertz eMac and a 1.67 gigahertz 17-inch PowerBook G4. So those are both significantly newer machines. They will run classic, but however, they will not boot natively into a classic Mac OS. Unlike this machine, this machine currently has Mac OS 8 on it. So I'm going to take off the side panel so we can get a peek at what's inside. Normally there are three of these screws holding the panel in, but uh, spoiler alert, I have already gone into this system quite a few times, but I've not really done a whole lot with it, believe it or not. There we go. Here's what the inside of the system looks like. We've got a power supply here. Got a couple of new bus cards here. At least one of these is a video card. Uh, there's one sandwiched below the video card, and then there's another card below that. Actually, I believe this top one's a SCSI card. Then there's a card sandwiched below it, then it's a video card. That's the order. But as you can see, or maybe you can't see, there's a little glimmer of purple inside this case here. Yes, yeah, so you can just barely make out the purple heat sink here in the corner. And uh, the reason there's a purple heat sink is because this computer actually has a fairly rare Sonic Crescendo upgrade card. Now, these are pretty rare cards, especially, you know, complete in packaging and working. This machine luckily came with this. However, I don't know a lot about it. I don't know if it works. There are no drivers for it installed. The version of macOS that I have was like a clean install that was just done like right before I got the computer. So unfortunately, I don't know if it does work. I don't know if it ever worked. But from what I can tell, pretty much everything else inside this computer works. Spoiler alert, not the CD-ROM drive though. Unfortunately, it makes quite a horrible grinding noise. But before we try and install the drivers for this card, we're gonna see what the 601 is like at 110 megahertz. Uh, we're also gonna see what this computer's got inside of it already to begin with and uh, what we're not going to have to buy. The special thing about this computer, and I'm sure this is true of most older Macs, is that you probably want a CRT to view this, but in my case, I don't have a CRT. Now, a regular VGA LCD is just not going to work, and that's because you actually need a sync on green capable display. Not all displays are sync on green capable, uh, and if you try to use a non sync on green display with these, like I said, it won't blow up. You'll just have a very strange tint. I have a sync on green capable HP flat screen monitor here that we're going to use with this alongside the Apple keyboard and mouse that came to me with this machine. So let's get that set up. Take a second look at the back here. As you can see, Radius System 100, Mac OS. This is an official licensed clone and uh, Radius from what I can tell was a high-end video card manufacturer before they made these clone systems. So 
definitely not the worst clone system in the world to own. Cool, display still works. Let's uh, go ahead and connect the keyboard and mouse now. This is the Apple Keyboard 2 that I actually got with this machine. Uh, I had to take the bezel off because a couple of these clips here are actually broken. So I plan to, I was luckily able to bend back into place, but I plan to reinforce these here, probably with some kind of resin, JB Weld, maybe super glue. Other than that, I mean, with the bezel on, because of the messed up clips, actually, some of the keys stick, but for the most part, it's in good shape. Now, it's unfortunately the membrane one, but even the caps lock locks as it should. And of course, to pair with that is Apple Desktop Bus Mouse 2. It is a ball mouse, unfortunately, but luckily someone has already cleaned this for me. And also, unfortunately, it's a single button mouse. I think that's everything. I think we're ready to try and boot the computer. So I'm just gonna do it right here from the keyboard. It chimed, that's always a good sign. Quite loud, but I'm not surprised by that. Little concerned by the lack of video out. Ooh. Oh no. Ooh, wait a minute. Okay, there we go. We had a Radius logo for a second and then a Happy Mac logo. Unfortunately, it looks like we're in black and white mode right now, but Mac OS is loading. It's a good sign. I hear the hard drive clicking away. We have a mouse, we can move it. I don't see the extensions loading, but it did kind of just come up. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, we went back into 256 color mode. That's good. It remembered that. And it remembered our background too. Okay, there we go. Extensions are starting to load now. I wonder if it was just trying to detect anything in either of the disks. Your clock is not set to the correct time. Okay, so the system battery is dead. Luckily, I ordered one of those 3.6 volt lithium cells. But I th think, think we're booted. This is strange to me. I don't know a whole lot about classic Mac OS. All right, let's figure out what, what version of classic Mac OS we have installed on this computer. So I'll go to about this computer and, ah, oh, ha, ha, we got a little bit of a surprise there. So it looks like this computer is already maxed out with 264 megabytes of memory. That's very nice because as far as I know, these Sims are starting to get quite expensive. Uh, but we're also running macOS 8.5, so not too old, but not 9.1, 9.2 bugginess either. So this should offer a reasonable amount of compatibility with classic Mac apps. Of course, if anyone has otherwise to say, please let me know, because obviously I am not the be-all know-all about these classic Mac computers. Let's go to the System Profiler, which is an application that still exists today in Mac OS, albeit totally different looking. Okay, so yeah, we've got 32 megabyte SIM, 32 megabyte SIM, 32 megabyte SIM, 32 megabyte SIM. Okay, cool. Interestingly enough, it thinks we're in 8100 slash 110, or Workstation 8150. Now, I wonder if the Gestalt ID is actually that, or if this computer has been a little modified. I don't know if Apple gave unique identifiers to um, Power Max and the clone program, so it's good to know that the 8100 is indeed this machine's closest brethren. We'll go to devices real quick. Okay, so we've got a CD-ROM drive here. Let's see. It is Toshiba with no disk inserted. Hard drive is a one gigabyte Connor for Apple. So maybe this is an original drive. So we've got a display card here too, and it's a Radius Video Vision. Don't know anything about that. New bus card is a Radius Telecast. Again, don't know anything about that. I'm not really interested in looking through control panels or extensions because I know already this computer doesn't have any extensions besides just Mac TCP. 
Uh, so there's no Sonic expansions installed. And, uh, of course, we also know that there's no Sonic expansions installed because the processor info here is just PowerPC 601, 110 megahertz. So that's the stock that would have come with this. There are some applications on here installed, however, it seems to mostly be a pretty stock Mac OS install. We have Sherlock, Simple Sounds, Stickies, Remote Desktop, Scrapbook. Um, let's see, what else do we have? We've got Notepad, Network Browser, Keycaps, Jigsaw Puzzle, Graphing Calculator, Digital Color Meter, Calculator, blah, 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 blah. This is all just stock Apple stuff. There is something on here that we can play with to kind of get a, a baseline for this system's performance. And that's Ultimate Doom. Now, there's also Dark Forces Large install here, but I actually don't think this works. Um, so we're just going to stick with Ultimate Doom for this video. As you can see, we've got Doom.wad. I'm pretty sure this is an original. This would have been the, the id version. Um, maybe not the id version, but the id version that was ported by a company that id approved of. Virtual memory can make it sluggish. Interesting. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. We're just going to run Ultimate Doom. Nice clear id software logo. Ooh, that's a tiny little window there. Wow, that is definitely not the correct resolution, I can say that. Let's see if I can change this. It's weird that Mac games have menu bars. So our options are large graphics or small graphics. Small graphics is obviously not available. Turbo, sound effects, music. Uh, I'm not gonna turn on mouse control because mouse control doesn't let me get to this menu after. Graphic detail. I guess that's a menu in here. I guess that's all we get. I'm gonna bump the screen size up just one more. Okay. And then we'll get into E1, M1. Let's see if I remember how to play this. Okay. So it's running okay. I mean, it's not horrible, but it's definitely not, definitely not how I'd expect Doom to run on a 100 megahertz machine. Um, I suspect this may be due to a lack of drivers. Definitely incorrect resolution has something to play with it. I would argue this is not the ultimate Doom because I can't really change my controls. Actually, I have to think about strafing. MIDI sounds good though. The music's definitely keeping up at least. Better than the SNES version, I will say that, but that is pretty low bar. but this is definitely gonna get a lot better once we can either get the resolution configured properly or we can get the G3 working, rather the Sonic card working. That's Doom. That's kind of our baseline for after we get the, the Sonic card working or some drivers for the video card, whatever. Um, but real quick before we do go, I want to show the weirdness that is in monitors and sound. So if I open the monitors and sound control panel here, you can see I've got 256, 16, 4, and black and white color options, but my resolutions are not resolutions. So I only get radius color 2 page, radius 2 page, or other multi-frequency. None of these seem to work. Uh, I only have recommended options. I have no added options here. Uh, so I, I just, I, I don't know how to change this. I might just be stuck at this resolution. And this monitor doesn't have a way for me to uh, black bar it unfortunately so okay so it's great to see it booting and running but it's kind of lame if we don't have any software on it additionally this drive is loud and slow so for this machine i'd really like to get a SCSI to sd adapter uh, they are a little expensive but i also would really like to make a backup of this drive just in case something happens or there's something that i missed on it i don't have a good method of doing that i don't have any external ide readers or anything like that as stated previously the cd-rom drive doesn't work let's uh try to open it and see what happens 
So it does sound like it tries to read the CD, but as you can see, there's, as you can hear rather, there's a horrible grinding noise coming from the, the tray motor. And it might not be bad enough to put it out of service yet, but it will definitely put it out of service one day. And additionally, the dr it's just not being read by Mac OS at all. If I go to the Apple CD audio player, I did insert an audio CD. You'll see it just says the Apple CD ROM drive is not responding, even though it detects it. So maybe that is, once again, a driver issue, but maybe also this CD ROM drive is just not going to work ever again. So that leaves me with the floppy drive. The floppy drive is kind of my only way to get anything on and off of this computer. I don't have any AAUI adapters. I, I don't have anything really for this computer. If I didn't get a keyboard or mouse with this computer, I wouldn't have been able to even use it. Uh, I have a USB floppy drive read-write unit on the way that will work with my MacBook Pro, my latest MacBook Pro. And I also have some blank floppies coming. So when those come in, Part two will be all about actually installing the Sonnet G3 card proper. And yes, that potentially includes using the HPV riser that they included, which I have no clue about this, but this is gonna be interesting to install. This was a quick look and overview at the Radius 81110. It's a machine that I don't see a whole lot about on YouTube, uh, but if you guys enjoyed this video and are looking forward to more videos with this system in it. Be sure to subscribe, like, and uh, until next time, I'll see you guys.